The story tells that after the battle in which Morgoth, the great enemy, ended the siege that was laid to his fortress of Angband, a remnant of desperate men remained on the highland of Dorthonion, and their leader was named Barahir. But their camp was betrayed to Sauron, the chief servant of Morgoth, and all were slain save only Beren, the son of Barahir. And he, after a perilous journey over the mountains of Terra, came at last to Doriath. There in the stronghold of Menegroth ruled Thingol, king of the Grey Elves, and Melian his queen. She was not an elf, but a Maya of divine race, and about the borders of the hidden kingdom she wove such mazes of enchantment that none might pass through them save by the will of the king. Nevertheless, Beren entered into Doriath, the first of mortal men, and there in a glade in the forest of Neldoreth he came on an evening of summer upon Luthien, the daughter of Thingol and Melian, the most beautiful that has ever been of all the children of the world. But she fled from him, and he sought her long in the woods, calling her in his heart Tinuviel, which signifies Nightingale, daughter of Twilight, in the tongue of the Grey Elves, for he was stricken dumb and could not speak. The story of Beren and Luthien, as it is told in the Silmarillion, thus continues. There came a time near dawn on the eve of spring, and Luthien danced upon a green hill, and suddenly she began to sing. Keen, heart-piercing was her song, as the song of the lark that rises from the gates of night and pours its voice among the dying stars, seeing the sun behind the walls of the world. And the song of Luthien released the bonds of winter, and the frozen waters spoke, and flowers sprang from the cold earth where her feet had passed. Then the spell of silence fell from Beren, and he called to her, crying, Tinuviel, and the woods echoed the name. Then she halted in wonder, and fled no more, and Beren came to her. But as she looked on him, doom fell upon her, and she loved him. Yet she slipped from his arms and vanished from his sight even as the day was breaking. Then Beren lay upon the ground in a swoon, as one slain at once by bliss and grief. And he fell into a sleep, as it were into an abyss of shadow, and waking he was cold as stone, and his heart barren and forsaken. And wandering in mind he groped as one that is stricken with sudden blindness, and seeks with hands to grasp the vanished light. Thus he began the payment of anguish for the fate that was laid on him. And in his fate Luthien was caught, and being immortal she shared in his mortality, and being free received his chain. And her anguish was greater than any other of the Eldalie has known. Beyond his hope she returned to him where he sat in darkness, and long ago in the hidden kingdom she laid her hand in his. Thereafter often she came to him, and they went in secret through the woods together from spring to summer. And no others of the children of Iluvatar have had joy so great, though the time was brief. But Diaron the minstrel also loved Luthien, and he espied her meetings with Beren and betrayed them to Thingol. Then the king was filled with anger, for Luthien he loved above all things, setting her above all the princes of the elves, whereas mortal men he did not even take into his service. Therefore he spoke in grief and amazement to Luthien, but she would reveal nothing, until he swore an oath to her that he would neither slay Beren nor imprison him. But he sent his servants to lay hands on him and lead him to Menegroth as a malefactor. And Luthien, forestalling them, led Beren herself before the throne of Thingol, as if he were an honoured guest. Then Thingol looked upon Beren in scorn and anger, but Melian was silent. Who are you, said the king, that come hither as a thief, and unbidden dare to approach my throne? But Beren, being filled with dread, for the splendour of Menegroth and the majesty of Thingol were very great, answered nothing. Therefore Luthien spoke and said, He is Beren, son of Barahir, lord of men, mighty foe of Morgoth the tale of whose deeds is become a song even among the elves. 
Let Beren speak, said Thingol. What would you hear, unhappy mortal? And for what cause have you left your own land to enter this, which is forbidden to such as you? Can you show reason why my power should not be laid on you in heavy punishment for your insolence and folly? Then Beren, looking up, beheld the eyes of Luthien, and his glance went also to the face of Melian, and it seemed to him that words were put into his mouth. Fear left him, and the pride of the eldest house of men returned to him, and he said, My fate, O king, led me hither, through peril such as few even of the elves would dare, and here I have found what I sought not indeed, but finding I would possess forever. For it is above all gold and silver, and beyond all jewels. Neither rock, nor steel, nor the fires of Morgoth, nor all the powers of the elf kingdoms, shall keep from me the treasure that I desire. For Luthien, your daughter, is the fairest of all the children of the world. Then silence fell upon the hall. For those that stood there were astounded and afraid, and they thought that Beren would be slain. But Thingol spoke slowly, saying, Death you have earned with these words, and death you should find suddenly, had I not sworn an oath in haste, of which I repent, base-born mortal, who in the realm of Morgoth has learnt to creep in secret as his spies and thralls. Then Beren answered, Death you can give me, earned or unearned, but the names I will not take from you of base-born, nor spy, nor thrall. By the ring of Felagund that he gave to Barahir my father on the battlefield of the north, my house has not earned such names from any elf, be he king or no. His words were proud, and all eyes looked upon the ring, for he held it now aloft, and the green jewels gleamed there that the Noldor had devised in Valinor. For this ring was like to twin serpents, whose eyes were emeralds, and their heads met beneath a crown of golden flowers, that the one upheld and the other devoured. That was the badge of Finarfin and his house. Then Melian leant to Thingol's side, and in whispered counsel bade him forego his wrath. For not by you, she said, shall Beren be slain, and far and free does his fate lead him in the end. Yet it is wound with yours. Take heed. But Thingol looked in silence upon Luthien, and he thought in his heart, Unhappy men, children of little lords and brief kings, shall such as these lay hands on you, and yet live. Then breaking the silence, he said, I see the ring, son of Barahir. And I perceive that you are proud, and deem yourself mighty. But a father's deeds, even had his service been rendered to me, avail not to win the daughter of Thingol and Melian. See now, I too desire a treasure that is withheld. For rock and steel and the fires of Morgoth keep the jewel that I would possess against all the powers of the elf kingdoms. Yet I hear you say that bonds such as these do not daunt you. Go your way, therefore. Bring to me in your hand a Silmaril from Morgoth's crown. And then, if she will, Luthien may set her hand in yours. Then you shall have my jewel. And though the fate of Arda lie within the Silmarils, yet you shall hold me generous. Thus he wrought the doom of Doriath, and was ensnared within the curse of Mandos. And those that heard these words perceived that Thingol would save his oath, and yet send Beren to his death. For they knew that not all the power of the Noldor, before the siege was broken, had availed even to see from afar the shining Silmarils of Feanor. For they were set in the Iron Crown, and treasured in Angband above all wealth and balrogs were about them, and countless swords, and strong bars, and unassailable walls, 
and the dark majesty of Morgoth. But Beren laughed. For little price, he said, do elven kings sell their daughters, for gems and things made by craft. But if this be your will, Thingol, I will perform it. And when we meet again, my hand shall hold a Silmaril from the Iron Crown, for you have not looked the last upon Beren, son of Barahir. Then he looked in the eyes of Melian, who spoke not. And he bade farewell to Luthien to Nuviel, and bowing before Thingol and Melian, he put aside the guards about him and departed from Menegroth alone.